Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Amazon European Masters. Group A is truly heating up as we're about to head into game number four. I will be covering the last three games of the day. My name is Darkling, and I'm joined by musical talent and LEC guest Nymera. How are you doing? Wait, how do you know about my musical talent? That's I've yet to be Instagram. revealed. I've seen you all there. <laughs> Okay, fair play. But congratulations on your debut, Darkling. Thank you. It's a very uh, pleasurable experience for me to be uh, alongside you for the last three games of the day, or potentially more. There are a couple of scenarios where we That's still right. have tiebreakers left on the table, but we'll see what happens with them as the day goes on. We have a lot of games to get through before we get to that point. Yeah, and before that, let's take a look at the highlights of LDLC versus Atleta. It was a, a game of League of Legends. I think that is fair to say Atleta yes. still fighting to get that first one. And I think what we're seeing, you know, from LDLC is that uh, they can play whatever style they want at this point, and they are just very, very confident at League of Legends. I particularly like the Gangplank. It's a little bit of a different look from what Ragnar has shown uh, from the rest of this stage of the tournament. Yike continually going back to that Viego, though, is something of a mainstay from this team. And they've continued to skirmish very effectively, continue to be very coordinated as a team, and they are a very terrifying squad of uh, players coming from the LFL, which are going to be going forwards from this group. Uh, as one of probably our tournament favorites. Yeah, LDLC, man, they're, they're just looking good, right? Who would have thought that the LFL would have a good first seed oh, after also, all? Also, shout out to, to Aika for building for building the book. The Majari strikes once more, makes me a very happy Ari main. And uh, there you go, my fa my favorite player in the group so far. <laughs> I mean, you get your merchandise book, you get everything you've asked for so far, but this next game coming up is certainly also going to be a bang as we roll through these last few highlights. It is going to be a good one as it is Unicorns of Love, the sexy edition the sexiest of all players going up against <laughs> the LVP second seed fighting for their life here. It is Bison Sector. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, going forward from that game, LDLC are not quite safe up in that first uh, first spot. So this next game potentially opens up LDLC to uh, drop down through tiebreakers into that second place. And uh, But even though after seeing that game, after seeing how they've been playing in this group, you have to feel like LDLC are feeling pretty safe at this point. Yeah, LDLC feeling good. They're definitely praying for a Bison's win here. A Bison's win would mean that LDLC locked first place. There is no way they would be overtaken by the Unicorns either way. Unicorns fighting this game, coming up against Bison's e club of course. But if they win, they not only lock themselves in top two, but they also keep their hope of forcing a tiebreaker against LDLC mm. at the end of the day alive. Yeah, and sadly, of course, we have to say goodbye to Atleta at this stage in the tournament. Uh, we know that uh, they are now out of this group. They're not going to be progressing either further, even further. So they will be here now, sat as playing upset potential, playing towards the blue shell. And that leads to some really interesting scenarios too, where we have to sit there and say, maybe the mentality's changed a little bit. Maybe even more pressure is off them and uh, we'll have to track them as they get through the day. Of course, neither of those teams we just saw in the Rift, they will be reprising uh, for this game four. Uh, two new teams coming into battle and it is going to be but what we have at the moment, the most exciting game of the day. This is a crucial game, mm. mostly for Bison's e club because a loss here means you're eliminated regardless of what happens in the last games. Yeah, the stakes are high. Uh, we will continue talking about that. Maybe it's even a Bison stake at this point. We'll see what happens if uh, the Unicorns really get off to a flying start. But either way, uh, both these teams still in control of their own desti destiny just about. It's getting pretty close to so coming down to those last couple of games. And uh, now I think we're going to go have a look through the standings to again visually reinforce how close this group is and what it means for, for the rest of it. Currently, there is a two game gap between Unicorns of Love Sex Edition and Bison's E Club. So that means that with Bison's, uh, if they did have a win in the next game, you'd kind of be waiting on LDLC to take down USC in the very last game of the day. Those are the two games we want to watch in terms of the battle for second place and, of course, the battle for first place, too. We talked about the um, implications of those. Atleta, they don't really have as much of a horse in that race, but they very much can play for spoilers still. Yeah, imagine Bisons, they take down Unicorns of Love here. They have their hopes high. They just need to take down Atleta and then hope that LDLC will take down Unicorns of Love. But then losing to Atleta, that game becomes very high stakes for Bison C Club. Mm. Throwing that game away would certainly disappoint every single LVP fan out there. And we know that Bison's... Uh, so we were <laughs> sat in the green room and we were just musing, look, Bison's are very much the architects of their own defeat in a lot of their games. Uh, they can lose a lot of games based off of kind of maybe overreaching for some things. It's also part of that volatility, which gives them such a high upper level, though. They're a very exciting, volatile team. We've yet to really see the peak of that style here, though, at the Amazon European Masters. And in this game coming up against the Unicorns Love Sexy Edition, we really hope that we're going to see a higher level affair between the two and I uh, hope that we can get ourselves some, some fun team fights. We saw that in their first match, of course. Yeah, you said it perfectly. I think one thing that is fair to highlight this game is certainly the mid lane matchup as well. We have Random, who it really isn't a random anymore, but someone who can definitely play no, every he's, single He's pretty notable. 
And uh, for sure, and he's got up against Ruby. He's and that's got up against banger. Ruby, that's who's, who's, uh, who's kind of my player to watch on the side of USC, right? I mean, we um, when I was casting their game versus LDL uh, LDLC in their first round robin, that was the player we were like, oh gosh, he's starting to pop off, and you know had this great early laning phase. Got a bit outplayed after that point, but again, we can see the uh, we can see the real importance of these players and how their mechanics bring so much early pressure to the table. Yeah, I think Ruby is someone who has really impressed me personally. Every time I watch this guy, I just, you know, get that sense of rush of energy. Oh, this is so exciting. He could definitely outplay it. <laughs> and sometimes you get your payoff, you get your clean out pay. And other times yeah, he ends up kind of kind of throwing it away. But either way, we are about to take a look at the lineup just to quickly run through them. If you haven't already gotten familiar with the rosters, the one of Bison's is especially interesting to me. I think this is a roster that doesn't have many proven players. We have a lot of up and coming Spanish talents. And I'll take a look at which rush we get to see first. But regardless, though, it is the Unicorns of Love, mm. Sexy Edition, and they certainly have some experience best. Ibo in the top in having the finals twice. Yeah, and then you looked at, if we're going to go back to Ruby very briefly, there's a lot of history on this lineup, but Ruby is a player that's been through the LCK, was on the team which became Sandbox out in out in Korea, and then went on to a free cur, then went over to the LPL, joined Rogue Warriors, went over to the PCS, has been through so many of these top world qualifying regions, and then has ended up uh, winding the way up towards the Prime League alongside so many other veteran players alongside that lineup. Yeah, and taking a look at the Bison's E-Club lineup, a fan favorite coming out of the Spanish scene. They have two especially young Spanish talent, Oscura and Mervin, coming in through the LVP second division. Oscura played LVP last season on Team Queso, had a pretty okay split there, making it to the playoffs. And someone I obviously look at as a Dane is Scooby. He has been playing in the Danish scene, making it over to the Italian scene, and he has also gotten a We top made it not 10 Masters. minutes before the, the <laughs> before the National Pride uh, started coming back out. Surprised you didn't have yourself a flag in the background for this one. <laughs> I should but... Yeah, I'll find Gooby, that on internet. No, 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 but, but, but I'll, I'll agree with you in this case that Gooby is an incredible talent, a very flexible player. And though though Bisons haven't really delivered on the hype which was surrounding um, them, at least so far uh, in this tournament, I think Gooby and his flexibility has added that kind of, at least the excitement in the draft phase. It's just gone a little too far. They have flex picks, but the thing is, when you flex enough, sometimes you go too far and you end up getting like a massive muscle cramp and a spasm. And that's really <laughs> felt like it's what's happened with the Bisons drafts on occasion. Now, we've just got to see now in this one, because it is again going to be such an important matchup, but they finally can bring out all this arrayed weaponry they have and all of these roles of the flexibility to try and get themselves a solid draft win over their opponents. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. We're about to head into draft and Bison C Club, their miracle run, run has to start right here. They need to take two games in a row. And if there's anyone that is used to doing miracle runs on the EU Master stage, it is Scooby doing it just last spring hmm. with Vegas. So uh, we have to see, of course, what our uh, priorities are. With Bisons, you're normally going to see a lot of Enchanters banned away. Probably going to see that Zeri potentially banned too. However, that's normally a red side ban, so Bisons do uh, Unicorn's job for them. This does open up stuff like the Seraphine ban from Unicorns and just have more flexibility to take away the more nameplate champions from Bisons, the champions which they've continually succeeded with. Yeah, the Seraphine will be banned away, as you rightly predicted. That goes the Ari, sadly for you, Nymera. No Ari today. It's okay, that's fine. Uh, you, you see, I've seen enough bad Ari players to, to kind of like temper my excitement for this being locked in. Ruby is one of the better ones though, so yeah, a li little sad to see that Ruby. No, that is what happens. The Jinx also get removed. That is something that we've seen quite a lot throughout the split, pretty much regardless of what region you look at. Yeah, so now you're looking at uh, what are your first picks? I mean, Zai is still on the table. That's that's normally a pretty good pick. But then you look at a team like Bisons, and you know that there are a lot of champions which can counter a, a Zyra if you pick in the Misfortune. But locking someone like Jarvan, it's harder to do the same unless you are a, a bit of a back pocket Poppy player. Poppy is a very strong pick into this champion, but we haven't seen so much of it, uh, at least in this tournament. Lorax only played the Javan once throughout the entirety mm. of the Prime League season. More comfortable on things like the Sensao and the Viego, but hey, if there is a better time to go out, why not do it at the Masters, right? You can definitely yeah. throw that out there, regardless but, but, though. Um, the counter comes in, that is the Sensao instead. Well, the cheap. Okay, the, the, the thing about the um, the thing about the Javan is that, and of course, now we've seen no AD carries picked in the first couple of picks, and that's sometimes a little unorthodox. A lot of people, uh, a lot of teams like to first pick, even blind pick a lot of the stronger ADCs. But when you pick something like the Javan, what you're saying is that if you're picking a long range AD carry, you are going to have to deal with the Jarvan diving onto your AD carry. We don't have to do that because nothing really matches Jarvan in that regard. Something like an Orn can very much help in that kind of uh, area of backline access. But you can kind of see that it's kind of Unicorn sat there saying, well, we don't want to put, pick in the Zaya and have it countered by a Jarvan immediately. If we lock that first though, and then lock in the Zaya afterwards, it more safely rounds out what you're trying to play in terms of a front to back team fight with one of the primary AD carries. So 
USC now looking to pick up a support as well. A lot of things being flicked through. What is your main prediction here? Is it the Rakan or what are they thinking? Uh, there's plenty of options still. You know, you have uh, hovering over the iPhone. But I was wondering whether this was going to be a Nautilus, actually. Nautilus is a very reliable champion. But just saying, look, Zyra Khan, early lane pressure, able to uh, take control of that bot lane. And particularly when you have someone like Gooby, who does play, again, a lot of mages, a lot of enchants in that boss. I mean, we've seen the Soraka uh, played just in their last game earlier today. Of course, that was banned in this one. But still, along those kind of lines, someone like Zyra Khan, with their strong early laning phase and being able to fight right the way from level one, it's a decent answer towards a lot of the more odd Ball picks. And now Gooby goes back on a regular 80 carry. The airfield is being locked in by him. Yeah, so now you're not at least completely outranged. And it, um, when Zyra was the crit champion, you think back to, you know, your season eight, your season nine, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Ezreal was seen as a bit of an answer towards Zyra because you do outrange them in laning phase. When it comes to lethality, when you have the airy, it's a little bit different because once you tag even just one feather, it's a fair decent, fairly decent trade coming through at that end. But still, Ezreal has some ability to um, lane into the Zyra, slightly outranging with the Q versus Q in, uh, in terms of the, the uptime you have of all your damage. So I I don't mind this pick, but it's not exactly a high scaling front to back AD carry. You're losing in the front to back regard currently. So we're waiting for the mid laners and top laners to be locked in, of course. But before that, we're looking at the second ban phase. It is the on on top laner being taken away as USE put their focus on random in the mid lane. Hot man to ban out, but they're trying either way with the core. Well, you have to, right? I mean, he's played, uh, he, he, as we said, played that Ivern mid and uh, did fairly well. Remember, actually, this was in the very last matchup uh, between these two teams. Ruby ended up dying on the victor versus the Ivern. There was a, a cheeky uh, little Q being thrown through to take him down on, on, in that particular matchup after the end of one particularly uh, deadly skirmish. But now you're starting to think of, I mean, USC burning out the Corky. If they want to ban out another long range champion, I think that signals kind of what they're going towards in terms of we want to be winning in the range, uh, mm. and make you dive into us, dive into those feathers. Bang away the Corky does one thing there. But actually what Bison's answer to that um, earlier in the day was, was saying, let's try and side lane if we're not going to try and 5v5. So banning away something like the, Ar the Aurelia, kind of a callback to what Bison's were doing earlier in the day and Unicorns stopping them from playing through that style as heavily. Yeah, completely correct. I 100% agree. One fun thing to mention is Random has only played two champs, three games to split. One of them being the Koki that has been banned, so he goes on to the other guy. It's the victim. Mm. <laughs> and uh, now you have, again, we're talking about, oh, banning out long-range champions, blah, blah, blah. Victor's still up there, you know. It used to be the Victor Jinx for most of this split. The Ezreal's still very long-range, more of the poke in terms of the um, the elongated amount of damage uptime in team fights when Jinx just starts popping off. Now you have to look towards Ruby though, who's played a lot of long, played a lot of the Ari. Those have been the real kill threat. And actually, I think thinking about it, I'm not sure if Ruby's got any of his champions. He's played at EMS is now available, at least saying all these things said and done. Has a chance to counter pick the Victor though and try and expand that champion pool a bit more. Looks exciting regardless. I book it's one of his most played champions as well with the Nar and the Syndra hovered before now locked in. Hmm. So now you are dealing with so Victor is normally pretty okay at taking over lanes fairly early into the game. Syndra, with the early pressure from uh, Dark Sphere, just being like, I'm going to chunk you down, I'm going to push out the wave at the same time, so don't stand on your minions, it's a bad idea. You can start uh, pushing forward in mid lane and giving yourself an option to play around a really high damage burst uh, between mid jungle 2v2 is quite effect effective. But actually, if you're looking at um, how you're going to play out these team fights, a lot of it is about kind of artillery, very long range backliners in terms of the Zyre Feathers, the Scatter of the Weeds coming out on one side, and then of course everything from Victor and Ezreal. Someone like Gwen kind of nullifies that. In fact, it's Gwen Jin's out, where they just have this invulnerable sphere, and you say, you have to get in close range. The range doesn't mean as much. So we were tracking that through the draft. Bison's answer to it is saying, let's just close the distance with things which don't care about the damage. I am very excited by watching this win coming in and overall a way more standard draft from bison than we have seen all of european masters really this is mm. by far the most regular i would say at the very least no and uh I, I wonder if this is a little bit of learning from bison's i think that they have looked more solid when they've had a bit more time uh, to kind of think or think their way through the game not play around very specific item spikes they have a lot of time uh, to work out what they want to do they have some ability to win through side lanes as well Nar versus Gwen can get a little bit flippy but we'll see what ends up, what ends up happening with jungle, jungle attention early too potentially give a side a side lane matchup but the 5v5s as you're saying it's the most normal draft from Bison's and I think it's the most even in the 5v5s which means that we get to see the execution of the 5v5 really be the determining factor between these two games as the game gets later. Bison C Club have to win now or it is too late to make it into the Amazon European Masters top eight. 
Unicorns of Love, they want to get that top two, but they also want to keep their number one seed hopes alive. They do. Um, you know, we've seen the drafts, talked a little bit about the players, a little bit about the team's tendencies, but let's talk about the team's regions too, because Bisons are coming in as LVP second seed. They're sat at one and three. The third seed, Barca, out in play-ins. It really is for now Team Kessler that has been trying to hold the standard steady for this region, while, you know, they were coming in as potentially one of our real top dogs. The LFL up there, the LVP potentially, but they've struggled to really deliver on a lot of their promises and a lot of the hype. This is the kind of game you can start turning that opinion just a little bit around it again, though, particularly against a region like the Prime League, which again is trying to prove similar regards uh, after, you know, uh, Eintracht Spandau and Game of Legion have also had some of their stumbling blocks too. This is actually quite an important game, I think, in terms of determining uh, the momentum of both these regions within the Amazon European Masters. Yeah, and especially for the Prime League as well. You've just talked about the LVP, but for mm. the Prime League, they're one and two seed are not doing that hard at the moment. Eintracht Spandau, one and two, and so is Gamer Legion. So Unicorns of Love, Sexy Edition, is really the main hope they have at the moment, and that's the team that actually came in with the least expectations out mm. of any Prime League seed. Yeah, no, and I, I think you were talking to, I think it was Black Gator from yeah. the Prime League uh, uh, analyst crew. Uh, I was, I saw some of what they were saying as well in terms, of, you know, unicorns are the worst team that we sent to Amazon European Masters. I think that was, I'm not sure whether that was actually in jest or not, because I look at this team now and I think, heck, they're actually pretty good. They're good. And, they're a pretty good team, you know, and Bison's now have to overcome them to uh, try and keep their hopes alive in this group and try and make the rest of the day a little bit more interesting for themselves in terms of potential tiebreakers too. Yeah, and Unicorns of Love, so far also the only team to take down the NLC twice, beating Bifrost twice in their play in group, so they've definitely shown <laughs> that they can play yeah, into the big one home. That one, lovely, <laughs> just hammer that one home. Of course, we need to reach the right. No. Of course, we'll be seeing, uh, we're seeing that group playing in the next couple of days as well. But uh, going into what's, what's happening in these lanes, as we were saying, you know, mid lane, it is fairly interactive. You can see how Syndra can upset Victor in a way which few champions can. Something like Ryze and like Ari can trade pretty heavily. But what I want to see now is Lurox. You have yourself mm. a pushing bot lane for now. You have yourself a pushing mid. You're on a Jarvan. You can definitely gank. It's the first strike Jarvan. It's not about the uh, lethal tempo, very early pressure. But I want to see where this first gank is going to come in because I think that particularly in top lane, in terms of getting the Gnar ahead so you're not as vulnerable to Gwen's split pushing, and getting Syndra ahead so that burst threat becomes so much higher is very important in this early game. That's what I'm looking for from the Unicorns. Albert Traber also in the top side doing his red. It has been pinged by Lurox. He's walking in there slowly but steadily, making his way over to the red side jungle. Albert Traber, has he taken it? Yes, he has. And Lurox just is able to see the remains of the body as Albert Traber now oh, gets caught out with the flag and drag. Eyeballs rotating down and priority in the mid lane. Also for Ruby, so Lurox. Can't stay and this is exactly now. what happens, right? This is exactly what happens when you have pushing solo lanes. You can start invading like this and I'll betray, but I mean, uh, this is, uh, I like to call it, it's what gets you kicked out of a casino as a league player. You're cooldown counting. Uh, sees that uh, some of those skills were used onto the minions, not able to turn around for a big burst combat, even though Zhenzhou is a, a premier champion at doing just that. Goes in, just annoys what Albert is doing and then uh, make sure they can get out because of the support of their own solo laners. Now Traber. Instantly runs back down towards the bot side, wants to guarantee one Scotland has succeeded at that, but what is his next move, Nightmare? What does he do after that little fight? Well, I mean, I think this helps in some regards, right, in terms of you can push in. You can already see that a couple of wards have been put down. Of course, those are your level one wards. Have to see what happens with the second ones coming up. But uh, the, maybe the next option is to try and cover a dive here. There are defensive teleports if it were to come in. Syndra's in position to do yeah, so. Yeah, TP already coming in, and that means Bison T Club are taking their tails in beneath their feet as they're stumbling away. Two flashes forth, and that's a very heavy unicorn. Yeah. Okay, so Bisons don't get away with a kill under bot tower. This does buy a little bit of a reprieve for random in the mid lane though. That means it's not going to be a teleport back to lane. It's not going to be continually getting ahead of the victor on an individual level for the Syndra. And what did we say Lurox's kind of checklist for the early game was? Probably trying to gank these solo lanes and get them ahead because of uh, how swingy their matchups are. Ruby is now just kind of taking a bit of a hit on that level. Maybe that favors Bisons and just kind of slow out the game and getting the victor to the point where they're very happy in this laning phase. And as we're about to hit that 5 minute mark, slowly but surely, objectives will be spawning, but... Lane state so far looking pretty good for Unicorns of Lava. CS lead is building up in the top side, the bot lane survived the dive, and... No flash and obscure on Albert Traber, it's gonna make it so much harder for Bison to make any play around this mm. Mountain Drake or any other objective, really. 
Well, those are the two flashes which you need for your playmaking at this point. Uh, you have a team, again, we were kind of talking about this very early into the draft before the Jin and the uh, Gwen were both locked in. In terms of the range advantage, Syndra, Zyre, they have quite a lot of threat from quite a long way away. You get hit by a random stun, actually with the Rakan flying forward, that's quite a lot of follow-up and blah, blah, blah. Um, so if you don't have your flashes on your big playmakers and you have to sit at that range disadvantage, you're not particularly happy playing around these 5v5s, as you're saying, dragon setup included in that. Have to see, of course, whether that uh, change is coming around to your potential herald, um, but that's gonna be a couple of minutes off just yet. The Rook spotted out on the ward in the top side, so Albatrade but knows where he is. Both junglers still focusing up towards this area of the map, and it's just small trades, and Rook yet again oh, going yes. for another day. To Returning to the scene of the chicken crime, uh, not actually going to be able to contest that one. But again, I, I do like the fact that Lurox is again playing around his correct resets. Bot lane had already reset. See now that actually Dreamer Ace, we're going to have to watch what he's doing on the Rakan. See if he's looking to um, aid any potential plays. Just heads diagonally through that bot side uh, jungle, giving himself options to respond to players across the map, but isn't helping out on top lane so far, which means that it's uh, a bit more of an even numbers fight for Bison should they choose to take it. And let's see if they decide to go for this fight as Elbertrade is in around the area and the needlework has already come out. Gwen is immune, guys. You gotta get out of the turn, Ruby might get taken down, but many just to flash away just barely as Mervyn throws out the emote. That's a little bit of beer. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why Gwen's pretty good into the likes of your Syndra, Jin Zhao, similar kind of logic. You go in for your burst and wait, hang on, why isn't my ult doing any damage? Just stood outside of their defensive range. Either way, Ivo's gonna get himself a plate for the trouble. And you see, they don't walk away with a huge advantage, but they don't end up completely flubbing the dive either. Actually, oh, hang on, just I'm gonna continue on this. What random does that? That's a very Doinby thing to do. You did this quite a lot when he was on top of the world where you'd play the victory, you just ult the minion wave, push it in for free, very quick way to just kind of like brute force uh, the lane shove and say, look, you're gonna lose something for it. So actually Ruby goes up towards top side, uses the ult, uses the flash, goes back and goes, hang on, this wave shouldn't be quite as pushed in as it was, loses the wave under turret mostly. I can very much respect this from random living up to Dawn Beast's name. Maybe random is trying to become unrandom after hopefully making the miracle <laughs> run for the LVP. That was a bad joke, man. Oh, you shouldn't even laugh at that. that I, I accept. Random <laughs> has become good, yeah. household name. Household he has name. become slightly notable. Maybe, maybe uh, if he wins, <laughs> uh, maybe if he wins, you know, the European Masters, yeah. at some point we can like start changing his name. Start. Yeah. I know we have like evolving skins in League of Legends. Maybe we can have evolving player names. Yeah, That'll so be the next. Step. Becomes notable, then famous, and then world champion after all <laughs> when he wins it in a couple of years' times. Regardless, though, a slow game here from Bison T Club. Normally, they would have taken some fights at this point, some good, some bad, and yeah. the gold dead even seven minutes in. But, but let's call back then, actually, to what you said in the draft, which I think summed it up pretty well. Hang on, isn't this the most normal draft we've seen from them? And this is probably the most, quote-unquote, normal early game we've seen from them, too. I mean, you're happy to get towards your two-item spikes, your one-item spikes, and play around your front to back, as we said. Actually, it's probably coming down to teamfight execution in terms of what skill shots are landing, how the, the Gwen and the Jinzo are using their various uh, front temporary frontline abilities. Speaking of skill shots, that's oh, one Dreamer, way to do it. Dreamer Ace, Flash Grand Interest, but the damage just not quite there yet. Bison, oh, Random takes down, and Dreamer Ace picks it up, actually. Lurix now in the front line, as well as Joe gets locked up. The Flash is back off cooldown, so it goes out to safety. One kill for Unicorn's Blood. And that is exactly what we were talking about in terms of her. Wonder what happens when skill shots hit. It's about the executions, trying to sit around this kind of posturing kind of phase. Unicorns find the first kill, and now Lurox oh, is going straight on towards the Gwen. flash, flag, and drag extend. Everything is there. The honey fruit is at enough HP. Here comes Ivo to try and help him clean up the kill. Mervin jumping around with the blast cone, trying to buy time. No TP, no flashes. He has the ghost instead. Goes for the ambitious oh my gosh. recall. Is he actually getting out? Is he actually going to get out? out? There's no minion wave. Well, the, the, Dream Age here going the wrong way. Him. They see him now, but he's out to safety. Mervyn makes out. Where did he go? Where did he go, guys? I mean, he just disappeared. Hero was thinking Hero was thinking that Soros was in the Prime League. I guess he has managed to sneak <laughs> into uh, Amazon European Masters after all. Mervyn with the crafty escape, understanding that uh, didn't have the mana or the cooldowns to fight back, but finds a way out with the Blast Plant helping wow. out. Have a Herald still on the table though, uh, so as much as the feel-good moments for Bison's um, kind of continue with that, there was a potential that with uh, losing a lot of your top lane, top side um, presence in terms of the vision and the way to push in your waves, that maybe the Unicorns could have pushed in to take that themselves, and they are in fact going to start it up. I'm just still. Oh no, I was just doing it for uh, rage. He's doing it for rage. My bad. I was like, oh, he's starting it. Like, where's Travel? <laughs> why's, why's Travel walking away? Would right, be a that's bit why. of an ambitious call. Regardless, though, Askia has rotated himself up. I still want to say, wow, Mervin, that's the best escape I've ever seen. I want to give him yet another compliment for that. The needlework, not available as he might have been looking for something up on that top side. But Herald has been spawned on the side of Bison, as it is, as okay. it is, Albatreeper. 
hitting it up. So with the all of the uh, the resets involved, looks like Bison's are actually going to take this moment to uh, take that objective. So now Bison's going to have themselves an ability to make a power play. Have to see, of course, where that would go down. I think if you start giving gold over to someone like the Victor or the Gwen, as we we, we talked about it from the Unicorn side, right, in terms of, hey, early game, Lurox probably looking to gank those solo lanes. Actually, speaking of it, Lurox potentially looking for a steal. I doesn't go for the 50-50. Doesn't manage to make it into the pit. Albert Traper still has Flash, as Flash Flex, the Joseph could be locked up. Dream Ace and the CC's there. But such a good Crescent guy buys so much space. Oh, and now Ruby storm. gets taken down. It's such a good Chaos Storm. As you're saying, Amara Lurix getting chased out into his own jungle. It's a horror play for Unicorns of Love 6 edition. The Needlework misses and Lurix gets out, but they lose one. And again, it's the Syndra into Xinzao. You pop the ult, but it goes straight into the Crescent Guard. The burst doesn't come through. So even though the Herald's gone down, you commit, you commit to a bit of a half-assed fight. And then with that half-hearted affair, Unicorns walk away losing themselves a kill. And Bisons get to reset and potentially use that Herald beyond it. Of course, we're going to go have a look at a replay to see how this came down. Lorax did the, uh, kicks his head around the corner to see if there was a steal opportunity. Absolutely wasn't at this point, but you're now sat here with Dream Race trying to potentially maybe I don't know whether he thought he had to bail out his two other members there because there was a collapse coming down. There wasn't a flash on on Ruby, of course, meant that they couldn't escape. Either way, they ended up kind of turning around looking for this quick burst. Doesn't work out, and they get punished for it. Question is now, can Bisons find themselves similar results without the Crescent Guard available? Because uh and actually with that being said, you see the approaching unicorns and chooses not to go towards that dragon and peel off it. But I think it's so interesting the fact that they've actually drafted the Syndra because that's the second play we've now seen it now, Mara. Ruby, he also target. They use their invulnerability, the mm. Crescent Guard, the Hello Mist, and they just stay safe. The burst doesn't come through, and it yeah. just makes Syndra feel so useless. No, and that's that's the reality of Syndra into some of these champions. Now, this is partly why I was thinking, hang on, what's going to happen with early ganks? Maybe this, this can get a bit tilted. One kill in that mid lane can very much start... Um, making things more Syndra favored. She's a very snowball-y champion. You get up towards high amounts of damage and suddenly your Scout of the Weeks don't just become a little bit of poke and a little bit of threat. They become like full-on kill threat after that point, particularly when you have follow-up from the likes of the Jarvan and the Rakan. Everyone else has very long range, right? But as it stands currently, Ruby doesn't have that goal. They're actually half a level down on random at this point. And the Syndra is going to start losing value from this point. Unicorns are going to have to start figuring out how to make use of their mid laner beyond this point and try and get them into situations where they can thrive a bit more easily. And with this game being a bit slower, more tempo oriented, I do want to point out that Gooby, with his ultimate, just stopped both Dream Ace and Reptile's recall to give a little bit of a tempo advantage, or at least get inside their head. No, that's important. That can actually be very important. I mean, we talked about some resets kind of leading towards that, uh, the initial Herald start, and we'll have to see whether that um, applies a little bit more. In fact, you can see that Dream Race is making his way in towards this, this mid lane. Uh, with that being said, now Gooby is the one that's uh, starting to unlock himself from the map after pushing in the bot lane. Yeah, and Reptile will lose a couple of minions thanks to that good True Shot Barrage. As mentioned earlier, earlier Dream Race might be looking for another engage. Flash is up. He did it five minutes ago. Will he take another opportunity here? He needs to be careful though, as Jura is in the area as he goes in. The Solar Flare available. Scatter the weak Ooh. barely doesn't connect. And he doesn't. And again, you can kind of see. Why the Syndra is kind of in this composition, those Scatter of the Weeks, uh, particularly with the, the follow-up available, can become very, very deadly, but not really finding the value it wants to right now. Oh, it's got a flash, Thunder's Blade, CC's there, but the damage is coming in as well. Then his wind becomes lightning, and it's Ruby who goes to the graveyard. Dream is now has to run with everything he's got, and he manages yeah. to get out the Herald of Summon as well. And last time we checked in with this mid lane, it was actually Dreamer Ace and Ruby catching out the, the victim. Speaking of that, some more damage traded back and forth. This time, though, it's Ruby stepping too far and uses his flash just the wrong frame of that animation. The Zenith Blade just ends up taxiing the Leona even further forward. Can't get away from that damage. And now, Ruby with a second death. Starting to really worry, if you weren't worried before, about what this uh, Syndra is going to be doing in this game with the gold they have available to them. Ibo could just go for the flash. Ooh. Now it misses. And the hello miss Gwen and Immune as the BM comes through. Ibo, I feel for you, man. I feel for you. <laughs> it's okay. We all make this. Commits the flash. I mean, it's still going to be uh, moving, moving out of that lane and losing some of that pressure on the tower. Ibo are now going to uh, walk up and maybe even take that one for themselves. First tower of the game still up and available. Going to go back to this uh, mid lane replay though. And again, you can see Ruby understands the importance of trying to play around this phase again. The posturing phase, right? We kind of stood across the side of the rift to each other, trying to land these long range skill shots, but caught out by that Leona Flash. We talked about that as something that was very important earlier in the game when it was blown from that ill-fated, uh, not quite tower dive. And now, uh, 
have to see what can happen in the next set of fights. The Unicorn's actually getting themselves control of the river for the first time in quite a while, but of course there's no dragon up, so they can't really utilize it for anything. If I said that 15 minute mark, Namera, such a slow game up until this point, but Unicorns have loved through sheer CSing and mostly up in the top lane as Ipo has also taken the first turret. Managed to build themselves up a goal lead of one and a half K. I know you don't like talking about its importance, but <laughs> how is the game state if we don't look at the goal? Thing? Okay, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so to clarify, I think that gold can be quite misleading. I think there are times when it feels good to talk about gold, but it's like 10,000. That's a lot of gold. Um, and there are other times when you're kind of like, you're using it to kind of mask a conversation about wider power spikes in these compositions. Now, we are reaching first items. Having the extra gold on Unicorns, as we said, when they have quite some flippy lane matchups, particularly the gold on the Gnar and the isolated matchup, that's what I find quite important. Has actually gone towards the, the Hull Breaker. It's an item which has been nerfed quite a lot over this split because it was so prevalent for quite a while. So they nerfed it for ranged matchups. So now you can see that Gwen, who is partly there for split push pressure, isn't going to find nearly as much advantage on that now. And maybe now Unicorns can look to hold their own in a more defensive position in a 4v4 while the one person of the Null actually pushes across the map after building up this item. Well, the trip is around the area. Hypo has to respect it and does so nicely. Running away for now, Lurix is also on the top side, so if it's an extended play, there will definitely be some assistance, but nothing really happens as the game still continues at this slow, methodical pace, and I understand this from both teams. Unicorns <laughs> of Love, if they win this, they lock themselves okay. into playoffs, remember, and Bison's, they need to win if they want to keep that playoffs yeah. alive. So, you, you know, you can you said you can understand why it's quite a, a slow-paced game. Now, this is something which I like to refer to as kind of like a, the culinary aspect of League of Legends. Now, as a color caster, I love... Uh, high level gameplay i love uh, the, the gourmet league of legends which is <laughs> you know your rotational low mistake styles which are very cerebral but sometimes you do just want a burger which is like two kills a minute absolutely just to the walls with all of the, the expert violence you've got on screen this is more towards the gourmet maybe leaving out in some of that craziness for later into the game but as you can see again it's very much about posturing it's very much about trying to use the range and not get caught out actually most of these uh kills and the big moments have been about catches rather than big decisive engages that's exactly the thing right we rarely see any of these teams contesting for a different objective if they show up the other teams back off and no one shows up to unicorns of love taking this Hashtag Drake, so that's the second Drake as the soul will finally take over the rift as everyone suddenly becomes a bit quick. They do, so uh, that might end up impacting some of the wider map state in terms of, you know, Ibo has gone towards a larger split push and build, gone for the Triforce, that's more obvious, but the whole breaker of course means you want to be sat alone in those side lanes. If a Bisons are now quicker to rotate towards that lane, maybe it nullifies the impact, just, just maybe an extra couple of percent points, which uh, uh, we'll have to track as it goes through. Uh, not often something which is quite visible to the spectator, but when someone turns up a couple of seconds earlier, you think, hang on, <laughs> it's a little bit awkward, is the not? As we see that now pushing in and taking down another tower. You know, no matter, maybe the cloud so will speed up the tempo of the game. Maybe, we will hope. Because um, <laughs> we are, we have been sat here for quite a while, looking at uh, champions move and reset, and reset again, and wait for the next really big play. We have four minutes till the next dragon. There's no herald. We are sat in for a bit of a long haul here. Look. There's something I want to bring up, though, that we haven't okay, really touched upon it. today. Hit me with it. It is something about Bison C Club, but not exactly their players. This is obviously a brand okay. new organization that has just been mm -hmm. created, but something I found out that was really interesting to me is the fact that Bison's E Club at the finals in Sevilla out-cheered, or was out-cheering Fnatic quick Queso. So Fnatic is obviously this big worldwide known organization having the favorites and the stacked academy team. But Bison C Club, the brand new team with five, players who doesn't have nearly as big names were out cheering them in the arena that is uh, but, but, insane mm -hmm. so you so and the thing is that there are a couple of teams like across history which has kind of had similar kind of vibes i suppose is uh no we're not going to see a pick so we can actually keep talking i mean do you think about maybe someone like the rocks tigers uh coming from like season mm. five where it was kind of like a bit of a band of misfits they didn't have an organization to play under but they kind of captured a couple of hearts and minds of the fans around it and uh yeah bisons have kind of done that with interesting drafts with that kind of volatility which they play with and um you know they've had so many cool community memes around them too not all of them translate fantastically well into english but there is a I meme about the that. bison's bus the bison's van uh Zgibi is gonna keep on uh avoid the drive by from Ruby. speaking of vehicular manslaughter but and <laughs> it has just been we we have gotten to the point where there are more towers killed than champions that is the kind of game wow. that we're signing for uh c again congratulations on the debut we wanted to give you the uh, the most exciting games possible duckling and i hope you're enjoying it oh wow i'm absolutely loving all the action i'm getting to you lad in these 20 minutes 
a, a few ganks and a couple of drakes. I can yell at the drakes as well, you know. We could, we could take it that far. <laughs> Regardless, though, that's enough of Bison's in this minute. I want to talk about Dream Ace because Go for it. I find this guy so interesting. Look, he's played in the Prime League since 2020, and I believe he's gotten fourth place almost every single playoff. So he has at least been so close to making it, and now he might actually make it into the knockout okay. stages. Ibo looks for the damage. Albert Traver with that Crescent Guard is so safe as Dream Ace finally comes in, but doesn't manage to lock him up as no Albert one. Traver is out. No one dies, Namera. No one's allowed to die. We have we have a completely like pacifist game of League of Legends. Now, I remember a couple of seasons ago, people were having a lot of fun with zero damage Trindamir only hitting turrets. I thought we were done with that era of League of Legends. I thought we could say goodbye to it, but we're, we've got it here today. And <laughs> reminder, just to quickly kind of put it back up, put the scores on the doors again. I mean, this is a high stakes match. Maybe that plays into the mentality of, ooh, we don't want to lose this game, so let's not make mistakes. Yeah, but you still have to make plays at some points. Look, they're waiting for five items. They're waiting for the late game team fight. They want to flip it all at an Elder, right? Why wouldn't you flip your chance of qualifying for top two to an Elder Drake or Baron, perhaps, <laughs> as well? I have a feeling that Mera, this game, they might be slow for now, and the Lord of Champagne might have turned into wine by Wait. now, and, you know, give it to the late game. Some action will happen. Maybe here in the mid lane, a Scooby could get locked yes, flash. up. Do they have the damage? Will they get him? No. Yes, they will, actually, rather. The flash doesn't get used as finally a kill comes on the ball. There we go. I think when you see the quickness pop there by Dream Race, you sat there like, okay, I would just be losing Flash for nothing. That is the AD carry going down, though, Gooby. First kill in quite a while. And this is going to open up a Baron start from the Unicorns, and Bisons are absolutely not in position to respond to this. They might have cast across the pace of the game here in Amara because the Baron is down to half HP. Alpha Trapper could look to get him with the wind becomes Lightning. Doesn't have a flash regardless. Okay, but watch HP. random. You can see how much damage random is doing. If they allow the victim to the damage flank. them with all the shred, look how much that could do. Rivet is on the flank, but now he's being flanked by five members of Unicorns of Love 6 edition. We'll have to jump between the turrets. And he's getting out to safety. The Baron, though, has been stopped. As in, you know, the Gwen was on a great flank angle, and you can see how much damage Victor was doing with just even the lasers across the wall with the flash and a chaos storm. Could have been made for quite an ugly sight. And, uh, is that unicorns even with the single pick the first one that we've seen in quite a while can't really find any big advantages off of it what this does mean is now uh unicorns have taken a lot of damage before they can go towards this dragon they've given up control of the river bisons get to stop the dragon stacking if they so wish and they are starting the objective i thought he's throwing out though so they do have something if they want to go for an engage other than lurex with the cataclysm could go for dream ice though doesn't quite have his combo up yet so reptile Ooh, just clearing reptile. the mid lane Good through Chip Arash as well, Reptile down to half. And this is, uh, again, we kind of talked about like the range of how these teams want to play with each other, but if you're trying to engage into this team of Bisons, you have the Jarvan who's fairly tanky, but you really want the Meganar alongside them, and Rakan tends to be quite squishy on those kinds of engages. You can see Unicorns really leery of trying to pick up that kind of engage, but now, oh, that's yeah, a the good Bison stuff. bus tries to flash forward, but it doesn't quite work out. They go towards Lurox, and they almost snip, snip him down with the needlework, but he goes golden for a few seconds, still goes down. Ibo about to Nara, they'll be aware that Gooby gets locked down, CC up against the wall. Is the damage there? Yes, it is not. It is Mervin who gets blown up instead. There was no hello miss. There was no safety, and there was no immunity. Dream Mace goes Ooh. back and CC up Alba Trave. A reptile, a few more horses would do it. Ibo battling random on the other end of Skira as well. Everyone from Bisons are so, so low as they're falling to pieces they lose two in the fight they okay three, it takes a while even fall as it takes trades. a while but we finally have ourselves a big cataclysmic fight and you know what the person who i really want to shout out from that one is ruby for breaking leona's ankles the flash into the zenith blade completely stuffed by the scout of the week but even with this all said and done it's not a barren start it's not a dragon and we're kind of left and a zero objective game state, and you can see what happens right there. Start of the fight, Ruby just absolutely stumps the engage that Bisons were looking for, trying to catch them against that wall behind that red buff. And after that point, you look at the damage carries from Unicorns, and they're fairly unthreatened. Whereas on the other side, with the Nar going in and all the rest of it, uh, Bison's not able to stand and fire and have as much consistent damage across the board. We discussed it earlier, the Hello Mist, the Crescent Guard, making it hard for Ruby to burst, but this time around, so, so patient. Yeah, that doesn't apply With... to Leona. Um, Leona's going and goes, ha, huh, my engage is failed. He used this the really power on uh, just when the Hallowed Mist ran out on Mervyn. And that's the adaptation we like to see, the one-for-one -one trade there. Very close fight. It was super close to going over to the side mm. of Bison's, but not quite as now. There's still only 2k gold behind. The Baron has been taken. So it's not a disaster. It's not game over for the LVP representatives.
No, no, it's not. And it means that both teams are starting to get up towards higher amounts of items, checking in on them. Of course, Gooby uh, on the Ezreal going towards, I mean, as Ezreal tends to do, very low amount of mythic items in their full build. Sometimes you get to the point where, oh, I say mythic items, yeah. There's a, you have your mythic item very late as Ezreal. Uh, speaking of Ezreal, firing that ult across the board and Lurox. Very low HP means that unicorns, they're trying to sneak it away. They know that the, they know that the Baron could very much break this game, but they're not finding easy ways towards it. Yeah, Bison's just take a mid lane turret instead and lose absolutely nothing. Now they might go for the fight as Ibo has already narrowed out. Moving goes into the hell of mist, doesn't find anything else. Dream Ace, I'm not sure what you're doing, man. You're, oh, you're he's behind enemy lines. Behind, he's, uh, enemy. <laughs> <laughs> behind enemy lines, but I'm not sure that's the place you want to be. The Krok's helping out for now. Scooby dashes forward with the Arcane Shift. Mystic Shot connects. Dream Ice, if you get out of this one, man, I'll be very surprised to see what he does. He's very fast, oh, actually. Oh, coming up. Nod's coming over off. the wall. Dream Ice makes it out. That's a dream play here from the support. Oh, saving Private Dreamer behind enemy lines, but Iber comes in with a clutch save, comes up and allows that battle dance out to safety, and <laughs> neither team, neither team is finding easy wins. Neither of them are finding any way to really exploit openings on the map, and you can't, I kind of get it right. Both teams are hard to dive into, and you don't really want to... Uh, flub your engage and give over a huge crushing victory, but the longer you stall out this game Doesn't necessarily mean you're further to victory the high damage uh, the high items on both teams Both teams just feeling quite a I'm not gonna say like uh, Cautious because this is beyond cautious. This is the point where it feels like they're just not they're lacking that decisive instinct And I, I wonder if it's the stakes of the game. I wonder if it's the stakes of the occasion Of course, this means so much to both of these teams You talked about it earlier it is two major ERLs that are normally seen as some of the top three, top four ERLs. So getting your teams out is pretty important, mm. especially what you mean? for Bisons here. They've already lost Barca Esports, LVP, lost one representative in the planes. That is not a good look for what is perceived but to be the second strongest ERL. Silly. And that's the thing, right? You were saying like, you know, these teams tend to be, at these, these regions rather, tend to consider themselves in the top three, four ERLs. I mean, LVP by some people's metrics were meant to be the strongest ERL coming into these European Masters. I think that's maybe uh, more of an uh, uncommon yeah. view, but I think, you know, but they were strong, right? I mean, they're definitely up there in that top two. Dream Race looking for potential flank, but either way, LVP has struggled to really make that land this time, and Prime League in a similar kind of spot, had some expectations, and uh, they have struggled a little bit. I've been watching forward to uh, have that Megan Of course, no flash to deal with, uh, deal out a load of CC. As it stands though, Unicorns have taken over the bot side of the map as that dragon is spawning. They've had no trouble getting towards dragons. It's the Barons which have punched them a little more. Uh, Meganar used, of course, remember that's a low cooldown. Yeah, very low it's, low. It looks like a bit of a whiff, but you try and use that anyway because it's up every time you're Meganar at this point in the game. It looks a bit uh, meh, but it's, it's a little better than it looks. Uh, it's like, oh, why wouldn't you try at the very least? As we do see the fourth Drake spawning in this game, it is the third one, the soul point for Unicorns of Love. Sex edition, they pick it up, no contention as okay. Bison's are focusing on the top side. So, look, we've seen a lot of the same for this amount of the game right now. Now we need to start thinking, okay, well, what's going to happen in the next 10-15 minutes? Because you have soul point now on the table, which means that Bison's may be at the point where they're going to get forced around the map by Unicorns. Unicorns might be at the point where they can force Bison's to get towards that dragon and not give up that soul. While the Baron is still up, try and play that uh, tight rope dance between the two big objectives on the map. So we're going to have to see how they look to play around that. Actually, Random saw the number of members walking up towards the top side and decides to uh, teleport out to safety should there have been a collapse. But it feels like Unicorns, by getting onto Soul Point, they have unlocked the extra mode of play for them to, to get towards. But either way, one bad fight can still very much determine this game in Bison's favor. And that's one thing that I really find super interesting about the build pack here is Gooby hasn't gone for a mythic item yet, and I'm wondering when that will come into oh, full like, effect. I said, and I'm asking like, you there now. Are some, what, there are some Ezreal builds which just have, like, I mean, at this point, I mean, Eclipse, Prowler's Claw, actually pretty good on Ezreal. Mm -hmm. You can also go for something like a, um, actually in this kind of game, I wouldn't suggest going for something like a Crown of the Shadow Queen, but some Ezreals have gone for that before, just because it stops you getting 100% burst out, right? So, yeah. so you get caught by someone like a Syndra, that can very much help in that regard. I would expect it to be one of the Lethality Mythics, so that's what we've mm -hmm. tended to see from Ezreals in recent patches. And when you get to that point, because you've already built three legendary items before, you instantly get, like, snap, three boatloads of that Mythic item passive, and that can very much give you a, a strong point in power after that's completed. But still a little way off of that, not really close to that four item mark just yet. Mm-hmm. And as we are reaching the mark, though, for team fights to become the normality in a League of Legends game, I want to know, Namera, mm -hmm. how does Bison's execute this fight correctly? Because they lost it last time, but barely. 
Well, you have Leona ult. That very much helps. Uh, it's not like you have any stasis on Ruby. There are ways to catch out. That champion, Zai is a little bit harder, right? So mm. you're looking at particularly how much value are you getting out of that Hallowed Mist and the Crescent Guard, those two big... Uh, Damage denial abilities from the sides of Bison's front line. Of course, uh, Leona, kind of the third part of the front line, but doesn't have that same kind of degree of safety. So that's what I'm really looking for. That's one way. The other way is unicorns dive too far into you, and there's a gravity field, and there's a Victor, and there's an Ezreal putting in damage over the top. I think that if Bison's are on the aggressive foot, it gets a little harder. You need to rely on your top two members in terms of the jungle and, and top laner to really do a lot of it. If they're diving into you, however, your options get a little bit... Uh, more free to work with. So Unicorns probably want to avoid that. The, the Unicorn style throughout most of the Spring Split has also been this slow and controlled. We're waiting for your mistake, we're good at recognizing it, and then we punish it. They are rarely the team to be the proactive ones, but we've seen it done hmm. just like in the last game against the LDLC, and now they're being proactive by starting off this game. You say that as well, but I mean, even back in the playing stage, Unicorns versus Bifrost from the NLC had very similar game in their second game versus them. It went late game, and Unicorns just said, you know what? We're happy to play around the neutrals, and we're just not going to make mistakes. We're going to sit at this point, we're just going to sit here, and we're going to wait for you to make the critical error. To say that the Lurks has actually been called out on the side. Will it do anything? Okay, Bison's going. Yeah, Azure goes in towards Reptile, but he simply can't find him. The Featherstorm was enough to keep him safe. The Blade Caller not quite available to take down Azure. So he walks out for now. I bow down to half as he looked for an engaged Gooby. That's a lot of damage and a lot of poke with these Mystic Shots. So that's going to be an ult raked across the bow of the team of Unicorns, but you can see. Leona, very, very difficult trying to engage. You can kind of see now why both of these teams have maybe been a little bit, again, as we said, overly cautious of trying to look for the engage because actually the engages themselves, the Rakan, Leona, in terms of the support role, not really the easiest champions to survive on your way out. Oscar does get away with it just in that one instance, but at least he gets the, the flash and the ultimate away from Reptile. Still got that cleanse to go through, though. So many defensive tools on that Zyra, and that's why, one of the reasons why Zyra has been so... Um, strong to work with uh, as a priority AD carry in the current meta. Yeah, random free call gets stopped by Lurex. Luckily for Lurex, though, he doesn't come in any further. I'm pretty sure he wouldn't have won that against random. We're looking no, towards the sword not. as well now, <laughs> Nymera. 45 seconds. So start on the Baron. They will be dancing around in a few minutes. Or a few seconds, actually. Hmm. So, of course, this is when we were saying that the Unicorns have themselves an extra option to play around, maybe give up the, that Dragon because they're on soul point. It means more for Bisons to deny it. And the Unicorns could maybe get themselves an angle towards that Baron, but either way, Unicorns don't really have access to either objective right now. And with the Dragon spawning so soon, it does look that maybe they're going to uh, miss the train on this particular opportunity. Bison's fighting for this mid lane priority up against Unicorns of Love, Sexy Edition. So much pressure is on this game. It is do or die. Okay, now for look at Ibo. Zero. Ibo actually has a long flank and there's zero vision there. You can see the blast plants been used. Ibo has mega, has flash, has an angle. He's building the now, and here he comes. He finds there he goes. Him, he goes golden. Gooby though, this is damage back in return. But in the front line, Albatray by the leader, and so is the rest of Fires and Zika. They're losing their members left, right, and center. But it's not quite done yet. Ruby down to half HP. Gooby throwing out so much damage with the Mystic shots as they look to secure themselves. The Dragon even... Bison's turn it around. But even with Ibo, with the flank, with the unseen flank, comes in. But remember what we were saying, Unicorns, they don't necessarily want to be flying in towards Bisons as Dream Race gets a heck out of dodge of that. That's real ultimate, but Bisons, they have more options when the Unicorns engage into them. There was a grab field, there was the Victor, there was the Gwen. They do end up turning around what should have been the Miracle Flank turns into more of a charge of the Light Brigade for the Bisons. Random with that guard-like stopwatch as well. Let's take a look at the replay now, Mara. Just be aware of Random and his... So good reaction time. Yeah, and at this point, you know, they know who's coming through, and that is an absurdly valuable piece of stasis. And even though you have a little bit of follow-up, got the aggressive ultimate coming in from Zaya. I mean, again, at this point, the front line is active. I mean, Jin Zao doesn't get the ability to pop the Crescent Guard before they end up getting CC'd 100 to 0 at the end of it, but enough of the team of Bisons end up reacting to that initial engage to turn it around, and that's where the t team comp has started to really shine now. And Mervin as well. I just realized that <laughs> that Needlework did so much yep. damage. No, I, I mean, as much as you can off. talk about Victor as a champion, that's really hard to dive into. Grab field, Chaos, Chaos Storm, being able to Zonia. I mean, when you got the Hallowed Mist and you start firing that middle work through, you're absolutely right. The, the Gwen is a key part of that anti-dive uh, component in the composition. The game still within 3k reach of Fires as they now look for Dreamer. He's CC'd up, but is able to battle down so way to safety. This game, Namara, so, so close. 
which mm. two of the biggest ERLs we have. It is. Um, of course, remember, uh, I'm going to say this a number of times this game. I've said it a number of times before, but uh, you know, this game is very important in terms of tiebreaker potentially for first. Unicorns would have to go uh, undefeated on the day as long as they beat LDLC in the last game of the day after um, the other games that have been involved. There's a chance that they can knock them off that first place perch either by tiebreaker or by other means if LDLC were to lose another game elsewhere along the line. Whereas Bisons, they're fighting for their lives. They're fighting to keep themselves in the competition. They're currently two games shy of what Unicorns have themselves. Three and one versus one and three. You see that at the top of the screen. But they also lose the head-to-head. -head. This is a must-win game for them. It is, as you say, and I'll mention it. I quickly briefed over it in Champions League. But if there's anyone who knows how to make miracle runs happen, it is Gooby. We're back on Makers. An Italian team, second seed, made it out of planes, made it into groups, actually. and yeah. then they let the miracle run happen as yeah. they made it as one of the only Italian teams to ever make it out of groups into the top eight of spring 2021. Yeah, well, it's a different region for now. Uh, see if we can do the same for the LVP reps of the Bisons. And now Unicorns once again going back to that dreaded Baron, and see if they can finally take that one down. But Bisons don't have vision. Looks like they're actually content to let it go. Again, we said that they're happy when people are diving into them. They're making a late approach. They see it going down. The Baron down to 6k HP. Alba Tripper could go in for a steal. Ivo gets CC'd up, and the damage from Gooby is so big. The Close. Baron gets taken over to Lurk. The 50 50 was there, but it was not something that Bison's to win. Mervin now looks toward Reptile, and the damage is certainly there with the needlework. Mervin, though, gets CC'd up against the Cataclysm as they dive onto Reptile, but he can't be killed. He's a dinosaur, and he's dishing out the damage with every single minor double kill for him. Lurx still alive, and it is the Bison bus that is crashing off course. There is no miracles. There are only unicorns in this miraculous world as they look to make their way into the top eight. Mervin gets chased down as unicorns. Look to end it right here. Oh, you said they were dinosaurs, but they really do, Mervin Herds. They do get themselves towards that barrier and they finally get themselves a grouped up team fight where Bisons aren't playing towards their comps strengths. They don't get the ability to peel back and it gets close. Rounded with another clutch stun is, but I don't think it's going to be enough. I think Bisons might have to say goodbye to this tournament. The TPs of their Ivo could go back and TP in as well, but he's about to narrow out. Give him a few seconds and he will certainly do it. Mervin, though, has to clutch it. The rookie of the split of the LVP has to stay strong, but he can't do it. He's in the hello miss, but only for brief seconds. The second seed of the LVP stunned by the third seed of the Prime League as they make their way to the top eight of the Amazon European Masters. It's about as slow of a burn we've seen from a game in this tournament so far. But it's still one which Unicorns end up closing out. It took a couple of flubs, like we said. There was that one fight around that particular dragon where they, they found themselves a flank, but it was still playing into the composition of Bisons or what they wanted to do. But no, sadly, there now for the LVP fans, they have to watch Bisons depart at this stage. And as much as they um, had so many interesting drafts and had so many interesting approaches the way they wanted to play the game, it just wasn't quite clinical enough. And Unicorns, by making so few mistakes, of course, there's still a couple of them scattered around, but it wasn't enough for them to lose this game. Yeah, commiserations to Bison E-Club, the second seed of the LVP. They made such a good miracle run in the playoffs to even make it to this point of the Amazon European Masters. But it simply wasn't enough. They tried to play the traditional way of League of Legends. And although it was better, it simply wasn't there. It's a, it's a disappointing end for them. And Nymera, the, the Prime League, they've got that 30th through. They have done. And now not only that, because they have only dropped that one game, have the Unicorns to LDLC from the LFL. If they were to win uh that last game of the day and both of those teams go undefeated for the rest of the day we could have ourselves a tiebreaker for that first place we could finally have ourselves you know an extra game on the uh the, the billing of what we've kind of put down for today and that would be a very interesting happening particularly given how dominant ldlc have been throughout this group stage be unlikely but it would be very dramatic but before we get into, will there be a tiebreaker? For first scenario, we will have an exciting game between Atleta and Bison C-Club. Both teams have nothing to play for. I'm expecting action. I'm expecting a bloodbath. And you definitely don't want to miss it out. We'll touch it to a break, but we'll be right back with that dang game. 